Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Investing for the Common Man, the channel that helps you save both your time and your money with short, concise, instructional videos. Today, we're continuing our option strategy playbook series designed to equip you to trade profitably in any type of market. Today's video will be an in-depth strategy guide on how to use the long put strategy. This strategy is a relatively simple bearish strategy, but has several different uses and a far more favorable risk profile than shorting stock directly. Before we get started, please take a second to hit that like button and subscribe. All right, let's dive in. Most of the strategies that I've covered on the channel so far have been bullish or at least neutral to bullish in nature, meaning that you're optimistic about the underlying stock. This strategy of simply purchasing a put option is actually bearish in nature. Many investors shy away from using bearish strategies because they tend to want to be optimistic about the future and prefer not to bet against specific companies or the market as a whole. But even if you don't use this strategy often, it is an incredibly important tool to have in your arsenal. You may remember that a call option gives you the right to buy the underlying stock at a specific strike price. Conversely, a put contract gives you the right to sell the underlying stock at a specific strike price before expiration. Before we get into the different ways you can use this strategy, let's take a quick look at the Greeks and see how it works. The long put strategy is delta negative, which means that your option increases in value as the underlying asset decreases in price. It is stated negative, which means that time is working against you by eroding away the value of your option each day, and vega is positive, which means that this strategy will increase in value as implied volatility increases. I want to take a moment to hone in on the relationship between the share price of the underlying and implied volatility. The VIX, the Market Volatility Index, is often nicknamed as the Fear Index because volatility tends to rise dramatically as investors perceive risk and fear enters the marketplace. Often when stocks rally, volatility will actually decrease because there is less perceived risk. But when stocks suddenly move lower on bad news, volatility can spike dramatically. It is this very relationship that makes the long put such an effective strategy. Let's take a quick look at this at the money put on SPY trading around $6 or $600 per contract. If SPY sells off modestly by $1 per share and implied volatility increases by 2%, we can use the Greeks, adding the value of Delta and then the value of Vega twice to predict that this contract would profit by $103 per contract. With a more substantial move of $2 in the underlying and a 5% increase in implied volatility, the option would gain $236 in value. This example shows you that even with a relatively subtle sell-off, this strategy can easily turn a profit of 40% or more. When we look at the risk profile of a long put, we can see that this is a risk-defined strategy and has substantial but not quite infinite upside potential because the lowest the stock value can possibly go is zero. If you're interested, the maximum gain for a short put is your strike price times 100 minus the premium that you paid for the contract. Like all options, long puts are leveraged positions, which means that you can gain significant upside potential by only risking a relatively small amount of capital. So let's talk about when and how we can use this strategy. One of the most common uses for put contracts is as a hedge against risk. There are basically two different ways to use hedges. The most simple and straightforward is to buy a put as insurance for the stock that you own. So if you own 100 shares of a stock that has recently had a significant rally like Apple worth $120 per share, you could decide to buy a put that gives you the right to sell 100 shares of Apple at $110 per share any time in the next three months. You might decide to do this if you don't want to give up your upside exposure, but fear the stock is overvalued or are concerned that the market might crash again like it did in March. This option contract would allow you to sell your stock for $110 per share, even if the stock value falls to $50 per share or even zero. This is the most direct way to hedge or insure a position, but generally as a long-term strategy, the math will not work out in your favor because you'll have to continually pay someone else to take on the downside risk of your portfolio, and that can get very expensive. 
The second way is to use put contracts to offset risk across your entire diversified portfolio. If you have a traditional portfolio, most of your capital is likely invested in ETFs and individual stocks that more or less rise and fall with the general market. A portfolio like this has a lot of bullish exposure, especially if you're using any leveraged securities or margin to augment your upside potential. If you sense extra risk in the market, whether it's a rocky economic situation, an election cycle, or a trade war, you might want to hedge your portfolio with an asset that will increase in value as your other positions decrease in value. Put options can be a great way to do this because it's a defined risk strategy that allows you to give up a small portion of your gains to establish a leveraged position that will offset any losses in the rest of your portfolio. One of the easiest ways to do this will be to buy a put option on a market tracking index or ETF like the SPY or the QQQ. This will offer you protection against a widespread market sell-off which would cause your put option to gain significant value from both Delta and Vega as fear enters the marketplace. Now this strategy doesn't have to be used as a hedge. You can also use it when you're downright bearish on a stock. Unlike long calls, I would not recommend buying puts as a long-term bearish strategy. This works best as a short to intermediate term strategy so that you're not having to cough up outrageous amounts of premium. Typically, I like to select a put contract with one to three weeks left until expiration so that I have some time to work with and can recover a portion of the option's time value when I close the position. With this method, you are far less likely to take maximum loss if the stock does not make the downward move that you're looking for. For example, at the beginning of the month of September, Tesla had run up to obscene levels into the stock split. And then on top of that, the company decided to do a stock offering of 5 million new shares essentially diluting the value of their already overvalued stock. As soon as I saw that news, I flipped bearish on the stock, despite my love for the company itself. If I had bought an at-the-money put with about 17 days until expiration, as soon as I read that news, I could have made up to a 200% return on that investment as the stock plummeted $170 per share over the next week. Now, I won't lie to you, I didn't actually pull the trigger on that trade because it didn't fit my portfolio risk tolerance and would have left me overexposed with too many other positions open. But this is just an example of how you can swing trade stocks that you're bearish on with put options. If you're interested in developing your arsenal of trading strategies, be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this options playbook series. In the next couple of videos, we'll start getting into more sophisticated multi-legged option strategies. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss those. If you like this kind of content, please support me by hitting that like button and leaving a comment below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, keep calm, stay healthy, and happy trading.